1998, we were living in Springfield, Oregon. It was the last few months before we moved to Lebanon, Oregon. And right at that time, there was the Thurston High School school shooting. And I had a friend whose daughter was in the cafeteria at the time of the shooting. In their congregation was a woman who woke up that morning, not knowing anything about the shooting, with a burden to pray for my friend's daughter. She did pray. Kip Kinkle, the shooter, did shoot her way and put a hole through her backpack and her jacket and just skimmed her forearm, and that was it. Apparently, God answered that prayer. Welcome to Truth Talk with Ed Skipper every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, and the number of promises that Jesus makes on answering prayer. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Wow, with these kinds of promises, why is it that we don't pray more often? I want to suggest four reasons. Number one, we may not want to depend on anyone but ourselves. Isaac Bashevis Singer, who was a, a short story author, Polish-American, said this, I only pray when I'm in trouble, but I'm in trouble all the time, so I pray all the time. So let's be like him, depending on God. Second reason we may not pray as often as we would like or should is that we simply get distracted by life. Life's events take us away from praying. When we lived in Springfield, there was a pizza parlor that was not too far from our house, and they gave a half-price discount every day of the month for the first 26 days of the month, depending on your last name. If your last name started with A, you got half-price pizza on the first. B, people got on the second. Our name, ending starting with S meant that we got half-priced pizza on the 19th of every month. Now, this was before the day of Google calendars. And month after month, even though we thought this was a great deal and wanted to take full advantage of it, we kept saying, oh, we forgot again. The 19th came and went. And so it can be with prayer. Hey, we love the promises of prayer, but we just get distracted. Third reason we may not pray is that spiritual things just aren't that important to us. The temporal has eaten up the eternal in our hearts. Our affections just simply aren't with spiritual and eternal things like souls being saved and disciples being made. And our fourth reason we may not pray is simply that we have lost our confidence in prayer because we've seen maybe in the past that our prayers didn't seem to be answered. And yet, the New Testament piles on the promises about answered prayer. For example, Jesus says in 16, 24 to his disciples, until now you've not asked for anything in my name, ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Or James says to his readers in James 1, uh, excuse me, in James 4, verse 2, you do not have because you do not ask God. Well, let's not be like them and go without because we do not ask God. And incidentally, I would love to pray for you. If you will like this on Facebook or wherever you're listening or make comments or in some way, let me know who you are. I would love to be praying for you. And until next time, may we take full advantages of the promises of God and pray.